Welcome back to IEM Katowice. Day two, second of the groups before we get through to the quarterfinals and the semifinals, which start tomorrow in the Spodek on the beautiful stage, which I'm talking about a lot, and you will see if you tune in tomorrow. Now, the next matchup is between the home team, which, of course, is Virtus Pro. They had a great win last time up, and it was a big win. It was a win they needed because the Polish crowd is so fantastic that we want to see a Polish team when we get through to the big stage. What Taz was saying was that they get no home advantage until they get inside, but they have to take on one of the Brazilian teams, and that is Tempo Storm, Peacemaker, I'm with you now. Brazilian teams here in Poland so far have done brilliantly. Luminosity yesterday topped the group. Yeah, um, Luminosity did a great job yesterday. We're doing great today. I mean, we lost two face. We did a couple of mistakes, but we should have won that game. And now we're playing against VP, the home team. It's a pleasure for us. And this, realistically, is the biggest tournament that you've been involved in so far. You did great qualifying to get here, not so good in a qualifier for the other major, but coming here is big for you and your team. Yeah, it is big for us. I mean, it's the first big tournament that we play. I mean, we still have to learn a lot. It's the first experience for us, but uh, we're doing great against the top teams. So time will prove that we can do damage to them. You definitely are. I mean, one thing you find when teams come into a bigger tournament for the first time, they can get overawed, they can get rolled over by the teams, they just can't keep up with the pace. So far, you've been close and you've won one, which means you must have a hope that you can make it through to the quarters. Yeah, of course. I mean, we have to play our A game now against VP. Then we still have Chance. Then we have Envios and Astralis. I mean, the tough matches are going to be now. Three top teams. But uh, we are confident. We study all the teams and uh, we're confident in our, on our game. And I think we're going to go great. Brazilian CS is looking pretty good at the moment. With Luminosity yesterday, and I saw Fallen sp speaking to you just a few moments ago, it's looking good down there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, our Brazilian scene, uh, we're helping each other, especially the Luminosity guys. Fallen is helping us a lot. I mean, they live across the street with us, so we always learn with each other, talk about Counter-Strike all the day, and uh, it's been good. I mean, we're learning a lot with them. What do you think you do differently down in South America to what they do over here in Europe? Well. Like in, in South America, we play a little bit like more aggressive and here they like to hold and do strats more calm. And that's what we learned from the last tournament and this tournament, we see it and we're doing better. Uh, we, we just have to play more, attend to more tournaments and get used to it and yeah. You've got that Latin fire. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank you very much and best of luck for this game, which is going to be an absolute doozy. Looking forward to it. VP taking on Tempo Store. Matt, it's over to you. You Latin fire beauty, you. Oh, thank you so much, OJ. I always love catching throws from you, if you know what I mean. Guys, welcome to the desk. We've got Yanko with me and, of course, Pansy. How are you guys doing today? Yeah, pretty good. First time coming up, at least, onto the desk. But yeah, looking forward to this one and, uh, yeah, it should be good. I think it's going to be a great game. Yes. I knew you were going to do that. So, moving right into it then, shall we? Tempo Storm. They could have played spoiler in this group. Remember, they put phase in overtime. If they'd won that, let's just theorize, if they'd won that, and they won this, they'd be through on that alone, which is crazy to think. They still have a chance to spoil Virtus Pro's plans nonetheless in this game. What's, what is it that you like to say? If a donkey had wings, it would that's, be an amazing that's Moses. bird. I don't know. That's Moses. Moses. That's just a flying donkey. Yeah. I'm not dumb enough to think that's a bird. Yeah, well, what if, what if, right? This is, you know, we can speculate the whole, you know, whole day. Yeah. The thing is, it is a best of one. You only have one chance, one opportunity. So... <laughs> really? Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's get into the statistical <laughs> side of things, shall we, before we get too far awry? Um, yeah, no, but look, th this is a big game. Again, we talked about Bolt's Tempo Storm's ability. They've got the twins, Henny being the kind of guy that's been struggling on land but has a ton of potential. Probably, in my opinion, no offense to Fallen because Fallen's impact can't be matched, but has more individual flair to his style of AWP. He certainly does, and map dependent, he could be huge. And I think Bolt's needs to have a big, big, big performance coming up against these guys as well. He's actually been pretty outstanding standing for you know the Tempo Storm boys up until this point. So I want to see him have a real swing up. Showtime actually had a very good game as well. He was the one I think who clutched it out in the end to take it into overtime in Dust 2. So I'm hoping maybe we see a lot of these players coming into their own because they certainly need it because you know if you take maybe Vers Pro's presence against Envy is okay well Vers Pro were just rolling after that. They were hitting shots. Envy were a little you know lackluster. If these kind of guys come out and they actually start hitting these shots getting in their face you could see another very close game that Vers Pro in theory should be winning but it's a very easy game to tilt on as well. 
And I don't yet know the map, Yanko, so this gives you some time to do what you do best. Let's break down where you kind of see this one going between these two teams. Well, the thing is, this is kind of tricky because of what VP, you know, before they never played Dust 2, then they started picking it up, but they were terrible on it. So it's going to be, I think they actually should ban it here, right? Because uh, uh, Tempo Storm just had an extremely close game against uh, FaZe. They also did good on Inferno. They beat uh, Efrag on Inferno. That's something that VP bans as well. So it's probably going to come down to something between Mirage. I think probably Mirage, maybe even Cobble. It's something that uh, VP used uh, to play a lot. Tempo Store and so on. So they did beat teams like Optic and CLG on it uh, in the NA region. So yeah, maybe those are some possible options. Well, we just actually found out it's Cobblestone. Yeah. Which is, I, I don't know much about Tempo Storm's Cobblestone. We know that, or rather, excuse me, Luminosity has the potential to beat anyone on it, but they're not consistent themselves. I, I've looked at a couple of, you know, the way Tempo Storm approaches map, and they're actually not that bad on it. They, they're 16 1 optic, and take what you want out of sure, that, right? I, I don't take much. <laughs> Sorry, she's saying. Rip, she's out. 14 rounds on the T oh. side, though in that particular and, game. And they actually have a nice like couple of choreographed pieces as well. Their pistol rounds are actually pretty well played. They, I think they did like the 4-1 split, 4-down drop, just pins it straight in towards the side. They actually have a lot to bring on this, but then again, Verse Pro do almost not necessarily the same thing, but they love using drop area to kind of like expose others. They did it against Envy all the time because it was like a, not necessarily a known issue, but Envy sometimes struggled until they put Happy kind of watching that kind of window out of drop, playing a little more passive to actually keep control of it. And you saw, you know, not too long ago, actually in the Pro League, but it's probably being able to actually do it again and again and again and bring up some decent victories. But prior to that, they haven't been having the best of times on Cobble. I think the name of the game here is Momentum, right? Because Tempon Storm is an extremely momentum-based team. You saw all the videos of them winning moments, qualifying for this tournament as well online. But at the major qualifiers, they couldn't get that momentum going. And, you know, they get all quiet. There's no one steps up. Players underperform a bit as well. And you get the result you get, right? So I think here, Especially on a map like Cobble, where there's not much room for the cities to, you know, move around, uh, to take map control somewhere. And seeing how VP also struggle to do exactly that on their city side in the game, let's say, on Overpass, uh, I think that there is a, a, a chance here for Tempo Store, right? If they can get rolling early, get that momentum going. That's the scary part, isn't it? Because momentum against Virtus Pro, we know they're struggling already. If, if it goes against them, how That's hard true. is this I mean, be? VP did beat Temias, but that was, a, an, you know, a, it was a weird game in my eyes. I, I think that uh, Envious lost more rounds, more, more stupid rounds than they do usually. And, and for me, last time that we actually saw these guys do well on Cobble was when Neo had like a performance we haven't seen Neo have in, in a long time. The all play was on point. They had the perfect synergy between him and Taz. It's a, it was a rarity. Mm. It wasn't something you can rinse and repeat. So for me, Virtus Pro need things to go well early on. Otherwise, they could actually start doubting themselves a little bit here. Players are ready, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw one final question at this before I get your predictions. Double up setup on this map is extremely fi viable. We already touched on that Pasha's back to the main opera, had a good performance. Neo hasn't. Is double up for Virtus Pro a possibility with Neo? I do not agree with that, so to speak. I mean, double AWP, because if you don't do anything early with it, if, if the T's are playing passively, what are you going to do with it later on? I mean, if you have one in B and one in A, of course, they're going to hit one side. And retaking with an AWP, it's not something you want to do. So I would much rather have people play, uh, have them play with one AWP, but maybe move them around. Maybe try and go for that uh, aggressive peak on A on mid, then move back to B or just play passively B or aggressively B. And CT side of things, I don't think I've seen Pasha up on this for quite some time. It's always been Neo on A. He's been the one doing this and he was the one who had the big performance. Pasha's very good at holding it, even on a very weak economy with those, you know, Mag 7 plays very close by towards that kind of platform. So for me, I, I almost don't want to see it. I don't want to see Pasha have to go to it. If he picks it up, if they maybe play it in, sure, why not? But maybe not force it on the CT side. T side, maybe test it out, see how he's feeling. Because that was always the original idea with him switching around the kind of orping players. Yeah, it's interesting. So maybe, maybe Neo stays as the primary on this one with that. Uh, let's get predictions really quickly. I hate to say it, Yanko, you are wrong in the last one. Yes. I didn't get to, I forgot to call out Anders because <laughs> he was wrong against Semler and that would have been a good one to I have. Was, but you guys thought. I was wrong, but I was predicting the game correctly as it went on. Okay. So I'm going with VP here. Okay. I, I feel that they're the more experienced team and uh, they, they got some motivation back, you know, some momentum going after that win against Envias. I think it's going to be close, but Virtus.pro are going to win it. I think the, the T side could be pretty rocky for a while once they stabilize the economy, get it actually going, get those orbs coming, you know, coming, coming out for uh, Neo there. I think it'll be fine, but I think it could be a closer game than some people may be expecting. Mm -hmm. Well, with that said, guys, we will find out. Remember, this game does have a lot on the line still for Virtus.pro who want to make it in front of the home crowd tomorrow. 
We're gonna send it over to the game. It's my lovely partner in crime, Henry G, but it's the man that I'm replacing, replacing me. Welcome to, back from Call of Duty and welcome to the cast, Alex Machine Richardson. You nearly, nearly got everything right there. Nice one, Matt. You're getting better uh, with age. But uh, yeah, so basically, I've stolen your, his boyfriend away, Henry. Not boyfriend, husband. Husband, I'm sorry, I didn't know you made it, official. Sure it official. Was it a Romanian wedding? Uh, we ran away, did a very quiet place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. lovely. Didn't want to make it too public, you know. I appreciate that, but um, I hope I can I can fill hit the role. Well, it looks has. like you guys have been rifling through the same wardrobe today, <laughs> yeah. so maybe. <laughs> this cost me like I three feel, euros. I bought it from I, a, I feel uh, like a thrift shop. Least, so yeah. yeah, that's absolutely fine. And I'll tell you how you know I bought it from a thrift shop. The sleeves. Look at that. What's that? Oh, right. I they're like, oh, I right, my elbow. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Why not? Perfect fit. It's a secret anyway, but I've just ruined it. But anyway, CS is about to begin. We're going to be going into Cobble. Um, the desk seemed rather split in terms of they were expecting a close game, leaning towards VP. Is it safe to say that that victory against Envy has kind of calmed some of the nerves people well, may have had surrounding thing, VP? Right? We saw them opening up against Astralis, and we thought, okay, same old VP, nothing's really changed. 16-6, they had, did have some interesting yeah. rounds, but ultimately nothing to really talk about. They come to Envious, we all predict on the desk, okay, this is going to be a whitewash. It's Cash, Envious, one of their strongest maps. It's going to be an absolute bloodbath here, but somehow, all of a sudden, Virtus Pro step up massively, and it uh, looks like we're actually, is this the knife round? Oh, uh, it is a knife round. I was going to get a little bit too excited, but Ooh. we can keep talking for a little bit. But uh, this map's kind of interesting, right? Like, I haven't watched Tempo Storm and Cobble, actually. Like, the guy said, we've seen him play against Optic, and it was an online game or whatever, but it's 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 interesting they did beat them 14 1 on the T side. So, obviously, they're, they're coming here to play. They know what they're doing. They wouldn't allow this into the map, but obviously, famously, a Virtus Pro map, basically not within recent form, I would say. That's uh, fair to okay. say. But actually, online, the only map they beat in that uh, Pro League season was against Envious on Cobble. Not so, forgetting they went 1-11. and 11. I'm sure you guys yeah, had but that, that shoved down your throat. That, that one map was Cobble. Okay. So it's going to be an interesting game, I think. I, I do favor VP in this. Like, if they can continue the form from the Envious game, and the people are fragging, Bialy yeah. really showed up, and um, so did Snacks as well. So hopefully they can kind of keep that form going. And obviously, I think we'd all love to see VP in that stadium, but that goes without saying, right? That, yeah, that would be that would be sensational. Just to just kind of feel the energy in the room when they're playing. That'd be amazing. But obviously, we've got the same storyline with uh, the young Brazilians as well. We'd love to see these guys kind of step up and kind of cement themselves as a top team. And while he was on screen, we need to breach it right now, Henry. We need to get it out in the open. Okay. People are calling him Hen1. Okay. But just for this game, for this cast... I think it's actually N1. It's a silent N Oh, excuse me, a silent H. Yeah. Almost like the silent D in Django. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. not happening, not having any of that. So again, Henny. He is Henny. I think that's fair enough. I think the, the desk have been going with Henny as well. Okay, I think good. it's whichever way you're inclined. We're going to go with Henny. I heard simplicity. Richard and Blue having an in-depth debate before. Okay. We're like, is it really Hen 1? Do we have to do this? Well, my thing is, if you're going to call yourself N1, just get rid of the H. Like, it's not necessary. It's just confusing. Drop it for us, for us, uh, our lowly British casters. But yeah, as you can see the team talk going on from uh, the boys of Tempo. And it's, what's interesting to me uh, is that they pumped. just have, they, they, they are so unbelievably hyped. And I love, do you know, the parallels or rather the contrast you can draw when you see the Brazilians qualifying for Katowice. Sure. And then you see these other, I mean, the Scandinavians, even the, the Polish, when they when they pick up the wins, it's so much more kind of reserved until, of course, that Polish crowd is present. We are in Katowice and we know VP hold this event very dear to their hearts. Of course, the major victors yep. uh, a couple of years back. And we are going to be loading into Cobble. Best of one tempo, so close against FaZe. And I think, I don't I don't know how much that's going to be weighing on their minds, but as players quite new to the European competitive scene, being so close yet so far, I can't it's, help but feel that's going to take a little bit away from them. It, it's progress, right? This is their first okay. international tournament. But we are getting into this one, guys. It's going to be Tempo Storm Tiling on the T side here of Cobble. We've got three sets of armor and two smoke grenades as well. So you'd assume more of a execute base play here. So far, not heavily committing. You see, most of the players are towards B tunnels, but actually VP aggressive. Really aggressive here. That's actually an interesting play here. See how this one pans out. Yeah, they could walk straight into the den of Tempo. That decoy is going to do nothing but encourage Pasha to encroach further. He's going to go for the first shot, but Bolts was expecting him. Greets him with a headshot very quickly. One bullet from his Glock and one kill on the board. Tempo do start strong, but immediately that, that causes VP to hit all of the breaks. Exactly. Now VP, that aggressive stance they took at the beginning, now has to go into a much more passive mentality. You can see them dropping back. Oh. The Taz answering back from the upper platform. He gets Bolts, who's the person who got the first kill as well. So four and four now. They still have a smoke grenade here. It's going to be flashbangs going over the top as well. And I think the tactic that Tempo Storm had in mind has been eradicated now. And you can see them kind of just making up their mind, looking like they may be favoring towards the drop-down room. But that's been smoked out for now. Yeah, and Snacks is just lying in wait. No armor, but I mean, he's got that flashbang. He's already used that smoke to delay them even further. Just still 50 seconds on the clock. The flash will stop another. But here they come. They dive straight into the aim of Snacks, and that's going to be Lucas gone. And it feels like quite a small price the VP had to pay. They put Pasha on the line and it did slow tempo down to a great deal. But it's not over yet. Here they come. They're pushing forward. They're going to actually kind of walk into the A site. There is a player sitting on the site, though, and it's going to all kind of fall to Neo to slow this down even further. Yeah, not 
not really much he can do though. He's going to be sat on the side. And there it is. Henny takes him down there. Lovely Glock headshot. That should secure the bomb as well. Bialy and Taz remain. They have Bialy on towards the balcony area as well, but they have got a kit and Taz does open things up as well. So two on two situation, but still haven't gained any real actual ground on the map yet. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, you want to send Taz in first, use that clever to the best of ability, but there goes Bialy, a headshot, and another for Phelps, two in a row for him. He collects it, and actually, Tempo Storm, they got the first blood, things did get a little shaky towards the middle of that round, but they, they found a route, they managed to break through snacks and drop room without paying yeah. too much of a heavy price, and the first round on the board for the Brazilians. This seems to be a common trend for VP as well. We saw it on Cash against Envious, they're going, like, two players are very aggressive towards B storage, they're doing the same mentality here once again, pushing in towards B, trying to gain intel, and locking down any early strategies that T's may be employing there. So, they get that first kill, like you said, but it does get answered straight back and then Tempo Storm getting towards drop down. Snacks did what he could, but ultimately the A split prevails for Tempo Storm here. They get the bomb down and the victory as well. So two SMGs and three AKs, pardon me, and a Gilil. But uh, BP haven't actually forced spawn into this themselves. They've actually done more of a passive Yeah, what's your, what are you thinking about that one? I, I don't mind this at all. Like Most teams will force by the second round, but it means you are limited going into that first gun round. No AWP there, but this is actually working out pretty nicely. That CZ of Pasha takes down bolts to open things up, potentially getting a Ooh. double here, but Phelps just about holding on by the skin of his teeth there. Goes down to 3 HP, but he does find the kill. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to get rid of that AK as well, throw it maybe perhaps into the hands of Lucas as he's looking a hell, lot, hell of a lot more healthier with that MP7, make that trade. You don't want to be uh, falling flat with that AK-47. A heavy investment for a second round, especially considering the absence of anything really on the side of VP. It's, it's interesting why they haven't swapped. You're absolutely right. That's what they should be doing right now. And it looks like they will go. be doing it. So two AKs now. Henny and Lucas going to be wielding those. But VP still definitely on the back foot here after finding that first kill. But Phelps is low HP. And this next shot from Bialy could mean everything. He has got the Desert Eagle. Perfect at this sort of range. But not perfect enough, apparently, as Henny opens it up, cracks the side open with two great headshots there. Yeah, and that should very well be all she wrote for Vertus Pro. They did manage to take just one weapon away at this point in time. Tempo should be able to wrap this up, but there's Phelps. He was low HP, and he's actually going to fall to his teammate, Lucas. He's like, thanks for the AK, mate. Here's a bullet. Do collect that yourself. Team kill for him, but Tempo do collect the second round, and actually two casualties for them. For VP not investing anything, I don't think the Polish are going to be too upset about that one at all. No, that's the thing, right? Like, you do have two school of thoughts there. You can force buy fully into the second round and take that investment, and it, it means if you do win it, it's amazing. It looks great, right? But as soon as you lose that round, which is more where the percentages are lying, you go into that first gun round and you don't have the AWP, you won't have kits or you enough utility and that can be so detrimental to a CT side. So this is actually fine. It's a more conservative approach, but definitely still one I prefer. But uh, we're going to round number three now. You can see not really much purchase once again for VP. They are going aggressive once again on that upper platform. Taz does find one, but it is replied once again. So you can see it was, it was kind of a B stack coming in from VP, but going to be rotating back towards A now. The bomb's still on the B halls for Tempo Storm. Just kind of feeding out the map, seeing where the reaction is coming in from the season. I can't be the only one that's got all eyes on that MAC-10, right? This is an opportunity to just make bank for Tempo Storm. Mad money. Yeah, mad money. 600 a pop. Going gangster style. It's going to be Showtime who is actually going to be trolling into the A side. A little bit of a long range duel for that MAC-10. He's going to want to try and close that gap and the smoke towards doors. will just delay and keep those CTs busy on A because the bomb is going elsewhere. Pasha does test the water and he's going to be greeted by Bolt. It is going to be four versus three, and this is kind of the perfect approach from Tempo Storm. They have just completely picked apart Virtus Pro, trying to catch any of those close quarters positions from the CTs, and now they can just work their way through. Another double this time. It's Bolts who collects it on B, and just snacks with a Deagle and a Dream. Yeah, this round is always going to be a bit of a throwaway. It's uh, a chance for VP to maybe damage the economy slightly, but with just a couple of Deagles and nothing really else, it's not really much you can do in this round. So this is where it gets interesting, right? Tempo Storm have broken it. They've got the 3-0, but here comes the AWP. It's going to be Neo wielding it this time. So it was kind of speculation as to what his role would be going forward with a pass would be going back to the orb, but mm. Neo's going to be one Rocky in the first gun round here. You can see they actually don't have a single kit. Oh, there you go. Taz picks up one in the end. Ooh. So they're okay for that. As long as you have one, I think you're absolutely fine. But it'll be interesting to see how Neo approaches. He normally goes to all those middle doors. He likes to be quite aggressive at the start. And like, if you can go and spot middle at the start and just even spot a player, that means you can kind of eradicate that fast B attack coming in straight away. But saying that, there are two players in the the top middle for Tempo Storm, but three players towards the halls as well. Going to be going for that upper platform control. Bolts leading the charge. Yeah, I think it's one to get boosted up, though. It is going to be Bialy, and that nade's going to make his position relatively clear. You can see the trajectory that it came from, and so Bolts could very well have a good read on Bialy. The flash does come in as well, trying to keep that CT blind. But as the smoke starts to clear, and Bia Bolts is going to have a perfect angle onto that one, put some bullets towards drop as well. The Molly will follow, as does Phelps. Look at this, they're going aggressive, they're taking control. This is looking fantastic from Tempo Storm, but Taz from Rocks does 
bring it back to a 3v3. And the rotate is a bit, a bit slow. Those two Ts look a little lost, actually. It's the thing. They heavily committed towards that B bomb side, but they still had two that's players odd. towards the top middle. But I guess you're kind of waiting for any sort of CT reaction and see if you can get a, a, a rotating player in that situation. But when you've committed that heavily, it's kind of questionable. Like they did make the frags, and there's still a three on three, and that does favor the terrorists, especially on a map like Cobbles. You can see how the CT is reacting right now. They've got two players still towards B. Snacks patrolling that drop down area, but just Neo with the AWP towards A. But here we go then, Henny. Just slowly edging out, seeing if you can find anyone here just to open up this side for them. 40 seconds and it is going to be a question of what Showtime can do in drop, but Snacks greets him. And now all of a sudden Tempo, this really have, well they've had the kind of pace taken away from them. VP can just laugh this one out or not. What on earth? Snacks just makes it easy for Henny, collects that to a 2v2. Time is becoming a factor though for the T side and they know at these CTs they can just play with this. They do have the, the necessary utility to get that bomb down though. That smoke will provide a perfect platform for Lucas to go ahead and give that bomb a tickle. Oh my god, look how heavily tagged up he is. And Lucas is going to get away with that one, but he's paid a heavy price. And now he's got to do something quite special. A one versus two. Neo's looking straight at him, but there goes Neo. Straight bullet to the brain. He's gone. And now Lucas with just 19 points of HP. He could very well do the 1v2. He's in a very similar situation to his Brazilian brother, Fallen, not too long ago yesterday. And now yes, Taz waits. Thing, right? Because you do, you're low HP. You want to kind of take a bit of a risk here. You touch the bomb, and you're not facing it at all. Taz trying to do everything he can in this situation. Now he knows he needs to find him. Bomb ticking away. The game oh. is up. The footsteps are there. Now it's going to be the shot from Taz that actually wins it. That's such a close round. They had one kit, and it actually was on Taz as well. So he manages to prevail there. And it looked like they actually had some footing in that tempo storm. 19 HP. It's such a difficult situation, but he played it so well. Taz just about comes out on top, though. And VP find himself on the board as well. Oh, when you're in that situation as well, Lucas, I mean, the fact that you know it's a fake, you're like, I've got all the information I need. I've got yeah. everything. And a couple of more seconds that round would have very well have gone the way of Tempo, but this round is crucial now for Virtus Pro. They can't let this slip away, otherwise things almost go from bad to worse. I know Sadikis is a big believer in making that those two rounds consecutively, otherwise things go really from bad to worse. This is the thing as well. It comes down to a one-on-one -on -one in the end. Even though VP win the round, you can see how it's affected their money. They've got a Scout, a Max 7, still a gun that's very viable on Cobble, like Pasha is very strong in this upper, pla upper platform area with it. So if they were to lose this, it'd be an absolute nightmare for VP. It resets the money, and they're going to be potentially on a double eco as well. So, I mean, Pasha playing it on platform, I can't help but when I see Max 7 Cobble, I'm thinking drop. So, Pasha, is he it's, a bit of an innovator with this one? It's, it's, he sits below that kind of crack normally. That's where he kind of sits there. And he actually does massive work of it as well. But this is kind of different for him to actually be on the platform there. Got to be naded out as well. You can see the T's are suspecting something. I'm sure a Molotov Man. will be dropped there momentarily. And there it is. It comes in. And he should be taken down here. Somehow gets away with his life. 16 HP. But uh, at least they are getting some information as to where he was. Yeah, and this looks much better from Tempo Storm in terms of investing the amount of players they actually plan to push with. They went aggressive previously with just bolts and there was no one there to back him up. This is better. Henny's already present and can start working his way. The smoke, though, will continue to play the time. 48 seconds left in the round. As VP, they have taken a casualty in Pasha, but the fact that he's still breathing is a bit of a surprise. And now he has an opportunity to go back into that tight corner and just maybe even go for a jump shot here with a Mag 7. It's actually more scarily accurate sometimes here in CSGO. 30 seconds. This is it. Time ticking away. It's looking like they will be committed towards the B-bomb site. So Flashbang comes in. It's going to be Phelps leading the charge. It goes past Pasher as well. Pasher does find one, but it's quickly neutralized. And Snacks coming in from the drop-down room. It's equal exchanges so far. Yeah, but look to change. That is Henny again from platform. He's going to be trying to keep that drop room on lock. But Taz immediately bites back. This is so tip attack. It's unreal. But Lucas has done one better. Again, a headshot to Neo in the same position. Neo's going to start having a little bit of a rivalry between him and the Brazilian. But five seconds. And we continue now with just 50 points of health. Taz is the one in a 1v2. And I can't help but feel Henny's about to take his head clean off. Easy peasy for Henny. Three in that round with his AWP. And Tempo are just going to throw Virtus Pro's economy into a downward spin. Yeah, it's so much hype around this player, Henny. We didn't really see him turn up to the major qualifier, but it seems like this map alone, he's gone seven for one and such an influential round for Tempo Storm as well. Finding three frags and is keeping his cool there in that clutch situation. Read it perfectly. And as we said before, that round was so pivotal for VP. Only having the 1v1 in the round they won, that meant they had such little money to play with. And now they go in with basically, mid well, not Nothing really. Fourteen hundred dollars, and you can see they probably will be on a double eco here. Pasha has invested uh, with the CZ and body armor. Same with Taz as well. But it should be a five-one going in favor of Tempo Storm unless an absolute miracle comes into play for VP here. Good read from Tempo as well. They anticipated that counter boost in drop. They were ready for that. They didn't want to let Versus Pro try any of this kind of wicked games. Trying to take an early advantage. Trying to take a weapon away. 
kind of player away from Tempo Storm in a round that they really cannot afford to lose or, or to lose weaponry as well. Well, you can see it's quite well read from Showtime as well. He's picked the Mac 10. It means he can be that recon player, go into certain situations first and kind of fill out the stacks of the set that though. Bolts has gone down to one HP to the hand of the 5 7 there. So it's looking like they will be kind of filling out the long A halls. Neo suspecting they'll maybe play as middle. He's got with him as well. It's actually going to be the kill going in his favour. And now they actually have a real chance of taking this. Showtime taking down one and Lucas opening up as well. So, ooh, ooh snacks through the fence there. There's another headshot, but. This is going to be Showtime going down to low HP. It's still a three on two. No weapon still hasn't been retrieved, and Lucas was just staring at it like that. AK is not moving. And now just on to Bialy. He is low. He's got no armor, no real hope here. There was plenty of low players, though, from Tempo. You could see a bullet to both Showtime or Bolts would have got them through. And Showtime's so lucky to be alive. He probably had got hit by about three different members of Vert's Pro yeah. there and had six points of health left at the end of the round. But, you know, most notable for me, I think we have to address Bolts and his success already in this game. And in, in, in this team, it's kind of refreshing to see a player like that who. Was kind of he fell out of the limelight in in the Luminosity roster, and now or, yeah. well, it was of course it felt like now he was, Luminosity. He wasn't quite ready for that team, but yeah. obviously Fallen's given him the chance. Game is Academy now Tempo Storm, and he seems like he really has kind of slipped into this role perfectly. He's fragging well, and this team is just going from strength to strength. Right, they've just gone overtime with Phase, and now they're putting up a very good showing against VP as well. Another eco coming in for VP, right? So we said the double eco is very potential, but uh, you can see they haven't really invested anything. One P250 and a HE grenade on towards Pasha as well. So. Phelps making his way out towards the other platform, smoking, oh, sorry, Molotoving out the chicken coop, I should say. Quite the opposite, really. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're right. There's absolutely nothing here. A PT50 to play with for Vertus Pro. But look at this That's... again. No matter what they have, no matter what weaponry they've got, it's happened even worse. Tempo, they've lost two. And Vertus Pro, they haven't brought absolutely nothing into this one. Neo could very well catch someone here towards doors. He's just dancing on the rock. He hasn't taken a single point of damage. Now being hunted down by Bolts in Showtime, he will actually do a bit of a tickle towards Bolts down to 65. But this happens time and time again. I mean, it's right down to uh, Vertus Pro just being so effective, but no matter what's in their hands. It seemed a little bit silly there from Tempo Storm. I could see what they were trying to do, like try and get him in there, get a couple of kills, pull some rotations over from A, while the rest oh, wow. of his team were ready to pounce on that A bomb site. But it's gone horribly for them. There's no one to get that refrag. And all of a sudden, it's a four on two favoring VP. And they picked up an orb, two AKs as well. They're going to win this round, hands down. You can see there is 30 seconds. And now Bolt, he needs to find this kill onto Bialy, but it's just little time here. He doesn't really have many options of the lack of grenades they have. Oh, I like this though. It's going to enable him to push in quite comfortably off platform. And another for Showtime. He's babysit Bolt's birth perfectly. And actually, he can start punching in the digits now. The other two members for VP, they've got weaponry. There's an AWP for Snacks and Taz on the AK, but no armor. Don't forget that the aim punch really will haunt them. And it is, of course, if they try for this one, you'd already written a tempo out of this one, but a quick they... play. Yeah. One flashbang is all it took, and they're back in the sight and back in the round. This is uh, pretty impressive so far. It's now Snacks and Taz on the retake. No kid, of course, but they have the weaponry. As I say, though, they Showtime gets his third of the round. Now this is one player remaining for VP. Wow. And all the hard work they did, the first opening kills there. It comes down to a four on two. And the Brazilians step up there massively, especially Bolts, where we were just talking about on the upper platform. Somehow, like I said, they didn't really have much to work with. I thought they were going to be caught in a crossfire in some sense and that the AWP would come on, but he finds both kills of the AK. And the power of one flash, right? $200 and you catch the platform and the statue player with one flashbang, enabling you to make that push, enabling Showtime to cover your backside and to bring that round home. 6-1 then, Tempo Storm, they do recover. I mean, let's remind ourselves, their coach, Peacemaker, in the interview with OJ earlier, he said, this is a huge event for us and it's also we've got a lot to learn. Losing weapons like that and losing potentially losing rounds like that is something you're going to learn from it here. They come towards long, they're going to be greeted by Taz, but he's not going to be able to do too much. Neo's there, though, to try and make a trade, but it's only going to be a one for one. Henny's AWP, the AWP duel is one out. And now this feels like a very fast, it should be a fast offensive towards the A site, because look at the position Phelps has got himself into. This is unbelievable how he's got there so quickly. Undetected, of course. Two players committed towards long A, four VP at the start. They left middle exposed, and that's going to come back and haul them here. Just Pasha on the A bomb side. Being Molotov out, he will avoid the flames for now, but going to have to give away his position. Needs to phase momentarily. They're going to know he's there, and you can see Phelps looming on that APC. He goes down. Pasha is still alive. Pasha was shouting, must be shouting at the early. Like, I'm so sorry, I didn't see him sneak through, but now looking to do everything with just 13 points of health. He's got plenty of time, as have the T side. They could full on just retract yeah, and head over to the other side if they really wanted to. They do still have control of the bomb, but they're not going to. They want to hunt down Pasha here. It feels like they've committed. Getting a little nervous though. Yeah, this, these faces, oh, one by one, is getting a bit scary, but uh, Pasha doesn't capitalize. But another big round there going in favor of Tempo Storm. This is the thing, VP, like I said, Neo likes to go for that aggressive face towards middle, and he goes for that shot, and it leaves Taz kind of isolated towards long A. It is a fast play from the T's going towards long A, and he gets taken down. You saw Neo rotating in, and only managing to take one. It's answered straight back. And as you just pointed out, Bialy, one of the heroes against Envious, is actually on zero for eight now. He's one of the heavy hitters of VP, not really arriving on this map so far. Yeah, I mean, you heard the desk singing the praises of Bialy and saying he was a big reason why that victory on Cash did go the way of Virtus Pro against Envy as well.
However, zero and eight, not great. And this is going to be surely a very easy pickup from Tempo Storm. You can see they're just walking on in. No problems. And hopefully no casualties. I say that though here. Come to the Deagle from Neo. And it's going to be a heavily tagged again. Showtime seems to have something special on his Kevlar. Because every single time he gets brought so down low, but not low enough. Just the four deaths for him. And that's going to be eight then. Tempo are looking incredible. And looks like Pasha's trying to find an answer with the auto. So he plays this at the back of B. He normally goes towards Chicken Coop, and it means when the smokes come in and I can execute, he can just spam through and make stuff happen. He can be very effective, but it can also be very lackluster as well. It's one of those like, kind of 50-50 sort of plays. It depends whether he hits the first shot and gets rolling and get multiple kills here. But here we go, Neo once again, aggressive towards middle, using the smoke to his advantage, seeing if he can gain any sort of intel here. But the problem is there's four T's waiting for him. Yeah, and this is when you're going to have to do something quite special because already he's down to 20 HP. And this is the problem. It's going to get naded. He's surely going to go down. No, 30 points. The Flash is there, no scope. There, Lucas was doing the flashbang dance through the smoke. There were two members of Vertus Pro laughing at him, but can they do more? This has really put a bit of a spanner in the works. Tempo Storm, they've got the right smokes, they've got the right Molotovs, forcing Neo into a very tight spot, but he's still breathing and he's still going to start fragging if he's not too careful. Henny training his aim, he's about to walk straight onto this, but look at Phelps, he's coming straight behind him. Taz is wondering what on earth just went wrong, but now Neo trying to be so influential too. It could very well have been three, but no, the damage was started by Lucas and finished by Showtime. And now 3v3. And this is that problem with that auto sniper buy. Now you have almost to discuss a potential retake or not, because look where that bomb's going. Yeah, the problem is for VP now, Tempest Storm have so much time and so many options available to them. VP, uh, quite the opposite. On a map like Cobble, you need to kind of hinge your bets, work, work out where you're going to be going. You're playing one player in connector so far and then one on either bomb side. So if Tempo Storm attack aggressively with all three players and find that first kill, it's almost an impossible situation at that point. And respect to Showtime for keeping all of those nades still. He's still got a flash smoke and molly after that exchange on eight. It does enable him to do a lot of the uh, dirty work for this B-Tech. And he's going to walk into that auto sniper, and that's the problem. One tag and a frag for Henny. Two bullets required from Pasha, not going to happen. And now with 25 seconds left, they've got time to get that bomb down. You can see the CTs are miles away, and they're going to be going ahead and trying to save those weapons. Well, at least it looks like it. Yep, Bialy's backing away, and now Bolt is on the hunt. They want to cripple Vice's approach economy even further, and they will. That was a full health Bialy, and now just an 8 HP Snacks is on the run. That was pretty impressive. Like we said, that auto sniper going into it, unless you hit that first shot and it's a kill, that's when you have a serious problem going against an AWP, right? He comes out, everyone knows that, like, Pasha likes to play that position. He comes out pre-firing it, takes him down. That opens up the bomb site, and as we mentioned before, the retake when you don't have three, two players in the bomb site will be very difficult indeed. They decide to bow out of the round. Snack's already been legged here, and he's going to be getting taken oh. down. Lovely shot there from Showtime to get Tempo Storm. The ninth round, 9-1 nine now against VP. There are maximum loss bonus, but that's not going to matter. You only get $3,400 going into these rounds, and without saving any weapons, that's all you have to work with. So a potential another eco coming in here. They could probably quasi buy it, meaning they get some upgraded pistols, maybe some grenades, and that'll be about it. But uh, that's what they're going to do. They're going to get P250s, a CZ, and a single smoke on Bialy as All well. eyes on you, Bialy. What's that smoke going to do, mate? Well, not too much, I'm afraid. But he's going to be smoking towards okay. drop down here and just trying to buy them some time. But that's all about it can do, to be honest. But I just want to kind of highlight how impressive this is. I don't know if we've kind of sung the praises of Tempo enough because, I mean, yes, it is T-side cobble. Yes, we know they've, effect they've been effective before. We've seen very large margins for them in their cobble games. You know, a reminder that we saw them play this against CLG, a very strong T-side during the uh, qualifier to get here. And, I mean, we didn't kind of address that beforehand, that Tempo, they had to beat the top, the cream of the North American crop to get this spot for the yeah. Katowice. And now they're learning against... Well, the best. So far, so good for Tempo Storm. Looking down the barrel of their 10th round here. 10 to 1 against VP on Cobble. That's not something I ever thought I'd be saying here. I thought this is where VP were going to turn things around and start arriving in this tournament after beating Envious. But this is looking phenomenal from the young Brazilian so far. Looking like Bolts once again, committing towards his B upper platform. Pasha just looming below. He gets his head dealt with straight away. And there should be a couple of kills coming in. But it's actually Snacks that gets the next. Yeah, and real respect to Snacks for actually going for that challenge up against the AK of Bolts. He's been so good on that platform. Very aggressive stuff from him. But here comes Tempo Storm just kind of stabilizing what was a little bit of a rocky boat. And now we can see the final kill will come in. Lucas. Nice spray control to snap onto the head of Neo, and that is going to be double digits for Tempo. Virtus Pro just the one, and this is that horrible, horrible situation where you've actually seen Virtus Pro's economy being in tatters since the very start. I mean, since conceding that that fourth round, it just went from bad it's, to worse. It's one of those nightmare situations. Like we said, they did the full eco in the second round, they didn't force buy into it, they win the first gun round, and then you lose that, and that's the full reset, a hard reset, especially when it comes down to a one-on-one. -on -one. That means you're constantly on the back foot, you're double ecoing, and then you're not having the best buy going to that next gun round. But they've changed the pace a little bit. Instead of the auto sniper, it's going to be a double orb setup. Yeah, the best spoke about this before, whether they felt this was effective, and it's looking like another five-man attack coming in from Tempo Storm here. So we're going to find out right now, will Pasha be able to deal with this?
It's a very aggressive boost from Pasha. I mean, he's gonna, he could potentially get pressured down here, but it looks like someone's going to walk in or not. Phelps, he was jiggle peeking it just enough to evade that orc bullet, and now they're going to go aggressive. They know there's a close quarter open, but Fiali, the boost E, is going to be present as well. But look at Snacks 2 for him, hot, lurking on the edge of that smoke, very Snacks style there. But look at Virtus Pro, they're having a little tea party by rocks. This is the thing, now they have got the double orbs, the retake becomes so much harder here. They need to upgrade one of those, two and M4, and Henny hungry for kills here, and of course he takes down Neo, continuing his fantastic form here, and he wants more as well. You can see the CT's just cowering, hoping someone walks into their crosshair, but it's looking like Pasha is going to step up here. Takes down Bolts, and we come down to a two-on-two. -two. Yeah, the bomb still isn't down yet. CT's have a lot of power here, and well, half of that power's just been taken away because Showtime was anticipating that drop route from Taz. Shuts him down, and now Pasha has 41 points of health, and desperately seeking that second round for Virtus Pro. He has to go for this one. There's absolutely zero doubt in his mind. But Henny, what on earth? One bullet from the Tech 9. And Pasha is going to be forced back to, well, not square one. They do have money for a pretty much a, a bit of a shaky one. I'm looking at Bialy's money. I'm looking at Pasha. Look at Bialy, zero for 12. Alex. Ugh. He's one of the star players of this team. and He's not bragging at all. He's playing that B side. This time, he was like, the support boosting up Pasha, and that was his downfall as well. Pasha gets away alive, but he's the one who gets completely flashed and stuck in the corner. But that was the double orb setup. That just goes to show you how detrimental that can be. As soon as the execute comes out and the wall of smokes are down, and you're trying to retake with two orbs, that's such a hard situation. And Henny just capitalizes. This time, trying to be creative once again, boosting up into drop down this time. But it's Lucas, another fantastic shot from him. Takes him down, five on four. And you can see Booty P just going from bad to worse here. No kits, Max 7, Famous, and a man down as well. This is looking grim. They look defeated, truly they do. We're into round 13 here. And Versus Pro, a team that have, you know, had limited success in the online stages. The only offline show we've seen them of from 2016 was Leipzig, where they did fall and to Dignitas, in fact, on this very map into that overtime, 22-20. Of course, we know the power Dignitas you possess on this map, but that's a different story, because here come Tempo Storm yet again. And I mean, you've already set the scene so beautifully. Virtus Pro, this is a must win round. I mean, they all have been, but the fact that their money is so, so limited, and this is an opportunity again for them just to try and claw something back before this, the uh, change of the half. We have Popiali here below Phelps, looking to get his first frag. And Definitely needed in this situation. Phelps is scouting out. He's got a lot of freedom here as well. You assume he's going to drop down and Fiali will be dropped once again. He's having an absolute nightmare. It goes down to 0 to 13. And now Phelps has got full control of that beat bomb side as well. You can see Neo still towards A, but his this kill is going on all over the place here. And it's all going in favor of Tempo Storm as well. Taz, the last player remaining. And what is going on here? It's going to be 12 1 in favor of Tempo Storm. Taz is wondering what the hell's going on. You can see he does pick up one frag, but unfortunately, he is one of the clutch masters of the game, but it's not going to be enough here. Only one frag, and this is getting to the point of no return now for VP. And, you know, the Katowice locals, the uh, Virtus Pro fans are sitting there like, I want to see you in the Spodek, right? And of course, this it, is what we all do. It hangs in the balance now. Tempo Storm have an opportunity to really just co kind of corrupt the chances of Virtus Pro. Let's not forget, they have already conceded a loss to Astralis. They did manage to pick up the win against Envious, but, I mean, people were not expecting the best Virtus Pro. We've seen that kind of fall off as of late, but they were expecting to see at least a uh, an offline stage Virtus Pro. We know how good they are in that offline environment, at least they, they have been in the past. So we have another eco coming in here for VP, going aggressive, of course, towards that other platform. It's going to be Bolts to get the first kill. And it's been a common trend. It does get answered back straight away, but Tempo Storm securing the situation here. There's two players from many Bialy, so close to getting his first kill, but 0 for 14. He's homing in on the Slayer. And just going to be Neo remaining now. This is just an absolute horror show, and one I think VP are going to want to forget because. I'm sorry, Alex, but this game pretty much is over at this stage. They're going to have to win this last round, 13-2. I guess it's doable, but after this sort of performance, what I've seen from VP so far, they look so far gone out of there. Well, I mean, in the words of, uh, of the king, Jay Biebs, he says, never say never. So we'll see if Virtus Pro <laughs> will uh, okay. we'll believe in just Justin Bieber's motto. <laughs> but uh, at this point in time, you're right. I didn't it even know who you meant when you said JB. Jay I, I thought you meant James Bond. Jay Biebs. Oh, <laughs> Is that what James the Bond Beep says? Man. <laughs> okay. That's what, uh, that's what we call him. All right, fair enough. You'll be a believer soon. I'll convert you. But this is the double AWP we were talking about. This is where you have to go aggressive. We heard what Yanko had to say about this double AWP. He, he said, you know, it's a bit of a risk if you don't go aggressive, you don't find something early. They look like they're considering the boost here. Look at this Virtus Pro. They're investing a whole lot towards platform. They are boosting. And it is going to be Pasha hunting us down once again. This feels very much risk reward, but Tempo have read this beautifully and they're like, okay, you can go aggressive. We're going to slow this down. We've got a minute and 20 to play with and we are not going to give you an inch because you will Ooh. take a mile jump peak from Bolts. He's got the inf information necessary. Now, I think Pasha's got a good read on these two T positions. Is he anticipating Lucas? Yes, he is. Henny in the meantime did find one. This is looking much better from Virtus Pro. They actually have the numbers lead in what feels like the first time in forever. Absolutely. I think it actually is. 
And now it is a four gun round, a four on three situation. And he's been tagged as well down to 16. So he's got control on middle. It's looking like Tempo Storm will be focusing towards the A side. Smoke towards Connector as well and making their way slowly but surely towards the end of long A. Going to be smoked out for now. And Taz, well, it was a poor smoke to be fair, is on the other side waiting for them. Incendiary drops and it's almost going to be enough. They're going to be going straight for it. Showtime does get the kill, but Taz from the pits of hell takes him down with him. And it's going to be a three on two now. Well, Brazilian barbecue to Vert for Vertus Pro to nibble on. 30 seconds. Time becoming a bit of a factor for Tempo Storm, and they've got a heavily tagged up Henny. There's no nades really. I mean, that's going to be the smoke and the flash that Bolts did have remained. He's going to try and make something happen, but Snacks has taken him down. Henny knows it's over, and Virtus Pro are going to take a scrap of the final of the, of the round of the first half into the second. <laughs> it's kind of funny that Tempo Storm actually looked dejected after losing that first round. Even after that second round, sorry. even though we're going 13 2 up, they don't look as hyped as I thought they would be. But uh, there we go. VP actually. Fun, managing to salvage something against. Like, it's never over until it's over, right? Yeah. So, if they win the pistol, a team like Virtus Pro definitely can grind this out, but it's going to need the pistol. If they lose that, it's literally GG at that point. It's just going to be nothing. Look at Bialy. Well, he, what, he finished on one for 14? Yeah. Like, this is just not the Bialy we've seen so far. He had an absolute nightmare in the B bomb site. It seemed like he was just caught up boosting players all the time and then caught out of position, rotating. It's never really got rolling there. Found one kill in the final round. And the, from the same day where you performed so well against Envious. Yeah, indeed. World class team as well. Just the two rounds of Virtus Pro does boggle the mind, but they do need this pistol just to start coming back from this one, you know. We kind of, we've already started to write them out, but they can prove us wrong if they do pick up this pistol. But Bolts has made a pretty strong case for this not happening. He's ready to get a very cool. big shot onto Bialy. That's his 15th death now for just the one kill. Just rubbing rub salt into that wound. Yeah, he doesn't want to keep going there. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to watch this one back as well. These guys really went into me. Yeah, leave me alone. Right then, well, you can see Tempest Storm have taken quite a lot of damage there, but that's going to be <laughs> recovered by Lucas there. The boost and the drop down, that nade should take him down. Actually, somehow narrowly avoids death there. And it's going to be the four on three in favour of the Brazilians. And Taz, oh, you don't want to go towards drop down, my friend, but it's going to be Pasha that takes down Phelps. It's a back and forth affair, and he has got control of the B site as well. Yeah, they've got one flash, and actually the bomb does look to be making its way towards that A site. The CTs are so firmly stacked in towards drop, but what that does mean is they can quite flexibly get towards that A site quickly if the call is made, but no one's there to make that call. I mean, the bomb will go down. That will be the main indicator. And Vanillo is sitting there like, okay, this one's a freebie. Well, this is the thing. they got the bomb there as well. So it's just going to be a bit of a distraction coming in there. And now Tempest Storm is starting to feel this as well. They actually haven't got a single kit as well, so they have to act faster. All three players towards that connector area have showtime towards the balcony as well. Just trying to see if they can find that first pick, seeing if anyone will expose their head. Taz does spot a player now, but just turtling up on the bomb side. It's cool. Lucas has got a decoy. They've got that retake taken, man. Here it comes. And actually, no way. The decoy could be taken away. It is. No. I'm being sarcastic, but just the two. And now this is going to be a 2v2 pasher, and Niptaz need to do this, and they have done a big step in the right direction. Just one man remains at Tenny, and it is going to be a successful pistol for Virtus Pro. Such a crucial one here in Katowice. The Polish side battling to get to the arena, get to that stacked Polish crowd. You can see them wearing that pin with pride. Champion at EMS 1 Katowice 2014. That feels like a long time ago now. It does. In esports time, it feels like about five years. Like, I've even been casting for six months, believe it or not. Yeah, like, it you, feels look, like you look like you've aged about eight yeah, years. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Since I've been here, like, it's been crazy. But let's see how this one goes down. I was going to look at the buy for Tempest Storm. It's interesting that they've actually heavily invested into wow. this one. Uh, considering the scoreline, it's not really required, I would say. But quite the contrast to versus pros, second round buy. Phelps does open things up. It's going to be Neo that takes him down straight away. But they have got onto the bomb side. But it's a flurry of frags for both teams here. It's going to be VP coming out on top so far. But Bolt's <gasps> still doing absolute oh, work no. here. He takes it down. And it's going to come into a 1v1. Henny versus Bialy. But Henny only has the USP to work with. And the bomb is still down towards that upper platform as well. I mean, Bolt's there. Oh, my God. Bolt's has just kicked them in the teeth. The bomb is loose. He has to go to platform. I don't know whether or not that information is also on the Tempo Storm side of things, but you can see Bialy cautious. This is a round Horrible. you just cannot afford to lose. And if he gets this headshot, it's all about the accuracy, and it's not quite going to be enough. It will be the MP7. Enough to bring home the round, but good God, could it be any closer? The pressure was on Bialy, of all people. He does pick up three kills and actually triples his score uh, from the entirety of this map. Now it brings to home num round number four, but could it... I mean, that's just nerve-wracking. Look at this double from Bolt. Snaps onto the head of Snacks and then immediately says goodbye to Taz as well. Two headshots. And it came down to a 1v1. The buy from Tempo, you said, wasn't necessary, but that's just reminded Virtus yeah, Pro. They have to keep this honest. Just in terms of like the, the point I'm trying to make with that one is when you have such a huge bed of rounds, yeah. like, do, you don't need to limit yourself. You don't need to invest so heavily into that round. Just wait to the first gun round and finish it properly. Don't try and take a risk and have like sell yourself short going into that first situation. But it did some decent damage there. It's ultimately not going to lead to too much here. BP did win the round, and they're going to be 
No, they're up against like literally nothing here. You can see nothing really purchased at all for the CTs apart from a P250. So Bombsite A is open for business here, and it's going to be the first frag going in favor of Bialy. But Phelps, the snake in the grass there on the A Bombsite, does take down one, but he's quickly dealt with, and are now going to be a four on three situation. And it's just a question of what kill damage can you do. The answer is not very much. Pasha did four, but they're going to be able to get the best out of that one. Curtis Pro going so aggressive. I mean, you can tell they've just got a very firm read, and this is what you were asking for. Coming into this next round, it does look like Tempo going to be investing as, yeah, as much so as they possibly can. It does look like it's a perfect buy, just a couple of limited utilities for the two. So there were two players that didn't invest heavily into that. I think it was three out of the five that did in the second round. But we can see Henny has got that, his uh, favorite AWP, one of the most talked about players on this team. It'll be interesting to see how he this approaches this one. He's going to be going towards long A. Most players won't face that angle. It's very unfavorable for the CTs. But VP going in hard here, actually. All five players looking like they're setting up for an actual BXQ here, lining up for smokes. And this could be the, the fast play in, wall of smokes down, trying to do flashbangs over and just take over the bombs right here. That's Versus Pro investing heavily into the site and Tempest Storm are going to know it. The rotate's already coming in from the player on A, but it's going to be a question of how can they deal with the flashes and the push. Pasha comes in, but Lucas takes down two. He's not done yet. He is tagged for 40. He does get himself a fresh magazine. The mod is going to force him out of position, but he's going to do damage as well. Taz did take a bit of a beating. And now Tempo have the numbers. Virtus Pro, they're also going up against a snack with just a UMP. Yep. Things are getting a little dicey for Virtus Pro. Every round that they have picked up still feels like a, a hard fought and a almost kind of luck is sometimes on their side. Lucas doing phenomenal work there, but Snacks now with that UMP needs to do something bigger. And it's going to be Showtime that capitalizes. It takes him down. It's now a three on one. Taz in another big situation. Doesn't really have control of the bomb site whatsoever. The CT's just waiting for him here. Not many options. Need to find this fraggle to Henny. Not going to be able to find the headshot there, but still options here. He takes down bolts and at least increases his chances here. And the problem is he's on 34 HP, still up against it. And it's going to be Showtime that knows his position. And Henny is the player that finally deals with him there. And that's going to be. A shock to the system for VP. They still have cash to play with, but that's another big round for Tempo Storm. 14 plays five now, and it's Lucas who steps up massively there. On the upper platform, finds two, and then in the fire, gets down the third as well. That's really impressive stuff from him, and it looked like a really solid execution coming in from VP as well. They knew exactly what they wanted to do, but the Brazilians are stepping up massively there, especially Lucas. Yeah, and their economy is still going to be very, very comfortable looking at Tempo Storm. It's just Lucas who's going to have to take a bit of a hit with that CZ. He could take a close corner on platform or something to, to, of that ilk. But that may not be doing too much because it does look like Virtus Pro and the bomb yeah. are giving a lot of attention towards the A site. Who is that keeping them busy? It's Pasha then. He's trying to sell this as best he can. This is the thing. VP are going for that long A control. They don't have the most in terms of nades here. They still have three smokes and one Molotov. So you'd assume they're going to get to the, push the CDs back to the bomb site, take away that vision. They've got the bomb there as well. Probably smoke off towards connector and balcony, try and do a Molotov onto the bomb site and then try and get that first frag. They're going to be smoked out for now, but that's fine. They still have plenty of time to play with here. And uh, you can see the CTs actually acting accordingly and correctly as well. Three players towards A now, and VP kind of working out their options. They can keep one player towards the end of long A, just showing some presence there. They've done enough to make sure he survives with the numbers there, and now they can go back towards B. So this could still work out very nicely for VP. It's just kind of like Dignitas-esque, get that full long A control in middle, push the CTs back, and keep one player there, and then he can be the distraction, or even the flank player coming in, watch his team execute. Just trying to keep the CTs guessing? Is that essentially the kind of style it's of play? Like, that's the whole thing. You're just taking vision away from the CTs, right? And then you can leave one player there, and this gives him that lurk opportunity, right? You can kind of like, you can either show some attention and then pretend it's an A, a attack, or you come in in the back and uh, take any rotating players out. Okay. Well, the bomb still hasn't committed towards the site. They do only have 35 seconds. It's definitely kind of guaranteed to be going towards that B site now. Lucas still hasn't been challenged with that CZ. He's desperate to try and make something happen with it. And he does! Good God, Lucas! Can you stop getting these impact frags? Snacks goes down. And now Virtus Pro could be in trouble. It's 20 seconds left. Here comes Phelps from the A site. That's actually going to potentially open the doors towards A because Taz has got another one towards Showtime. And the bomb is on its way towards Bolts, but with 15 seconds left, it's all about picking the right moment to show. Yeah, this is it. Bolts oh can step up massively. Oh, he gets the first go. frag, but it's going to be Taz that steps up. They narrowly avoid death there. Could have been absolutely nuts. And uh, had he have found two frags and denied the bomb, that could have got really interesting. But they managed to stay alive for VP after losing that first frag, like you said, towards Lucas. Just that CZ in hand opens things up. It's a massive kill, but VP acting accordingly, going in for that A split. We said they left that player towards long A. Opens up the opportunity to go for the A split, right? Neo coming in, finding the players on the bomb site, and uh, they secure the round. And that's actually reset Tempo Storm into a pretty much full eco here as well. So refreshing stuff, actually, from Virtus Pro. All of a sudden, you know, we said they look kind of like a wounded animal in that first half, but now they do seem to be finding their feet somewhat. Bandages on, and they're starting to try and make something happen in this game. Well, already a flurry of frags, and it is, of course, nothing brought from Tempo Storm. I say nothing. A pinch of a P250, but that's about it. Taz 
I'm well aware that the CTs do want to just take something away from him in this round and he's going to be backing away, realizing that there's no point investing overly heavily towards that long area yeah, early. That's the thing, right? They actually went for the full long A um, setup there, like three players towards long A and Tempest Storm losing the first two kills. VP, you know what? This is probably going to be a stack towards that area. Let's just bail out, go towards B, and it's a fully open bomb site here. So this is a guaranteed round for them. Very smart play, not giving away a single point of health there as well. And it's going to be Taz continuing the rampage here. Takes down Phelps, and he can see another player on his crosshair as well. That's going to be Showtime, he gets dropped as well. So just leaving poor old Bolt, and really many options for him yet. Yeah, maybe get an exit kill with that P250. But uh, BP making a, a solid case for themselves in the second half. That's going to be 5-1 after this round. Yeah, I mean, the only one, the one round they did, they did manage to acquire off the back of Lucas, really. Sure, that huge was the thing, right? Eight. It was just a huge individual performance, and Tempest Storm have definitely done enough here to win the game. It's just whether they can just find yeah. that next round, just kind of secure them over time. That's like the pressure release, right? That's for this young team, kind of inexperienced. They just need to get the number 15, and then they can start thinking, right, okay, that's we've done enough now. Yeah. We're getting these guarantee over time. And that's actually a, a huge point that isn't always made about that kind of that mental that mental problem, the mental lump of 14. Because you sit there and you go, they could actually do this. You sit 15, you're like, right, worst case scenario, we forget how to play CS, we have at least an overtime to stabilize. Exactly. So now the money wasn't great. I think it's about 3.2 average across the board. So they're coming in with like a little partial buy here. So not great pistols, and they can see they've got five HEs. I'm going to assume it's going to go towards the B bomb site and maybe that airstrike mentality towards the upper B platform. You'll chuck five grenades there, you're hoping it's a B rush, right. and taking down a couple of guns with you. But I don't think it's going to work out for them. You can see it's actually a very heavy A setup from BP here. The nades haven't actually been chucked in straight away. So maybe waiting to see some presence here. Maybe the retake grenades could be a factor as well. Maybe Bolt's made the call. He seems to be already kind of perking his ears up towards the A side. I think he's realized that this is definitely not going to be that B-plat need success. Here they go, though, diving straight through. It's just all about information. They're going to be hitting their shots very quickly. Here come the nades, trying to whittle away at that Virtus Pro HP. In comes Taz. He's just going to be just having a bit of a spring in his step as he approaches the A site. Molotovs are being invested quite heavily. And you can see Virtus Pro margin for error so minimal when there are at that 14 mark. They're clearing the corners, and they are going to be taking down Tempo Storm relatively easily. BI just go down, though, and... Snacks quick to trade that one. Goodbye, Phelps. And he's low, and Lucas can't do much as well. And so this is just going to be the end. All she wrote for Tempo, unless Lucas does something rather mind-boggling. He's got a kit, Henry. Okay. There's a, there's a silver lining in this cloud, okay, but no. So I can, he's got this. I can, I can stop playing around and tell you that, I mean, 14-8, Tempo Storm, they've, they've kind of, that's two rounds they've give, gifted over to Virtus Pro with the P250s and the, a stack attempt. Is this, is, this next round is going to be very telling. Exactly. Well, to quote Sadikus, how do you eat an elephant? How dare you bring up your ex when we are starting to cast together? <laughs> the answer How is dare you? Piece by piece. So whatever the deficit, you can just concentrate round by round, slowly but surely, get your swell. Chip away at them right. and work the money, work the body, and you can actually... And it's actually getting closer and closer now. This could be 14 plays 9, and it's actually a double orb set up here for Tempo Storm. So it'll be interesting to see whether they go aggressive here, or whether they'll be like playing two orbs, one or towards A, one towards B, or whether they go fast towards middle. Let's see what they bring to the table. It's going to be Showtime and Henny wielding those weapons. Showtime's actually fast onto B. He could uh, slow down what felt like a fast Virtus Pro presence on towards platform. You can see he's already getting himself into Coop. And Bialy could walk straight in. He's going to be flashed. But oh, they lined up. That could have been two. It's not, though. Bullet whistles past the ear of Bialy. Now they approach. And look at the mollies. They're going to be clearing out that area. He is going to be cooked alive. The smoke comes in, but that's going to be nothing. Virtus Pro have just taken full control of this site. And now you can't help but feel it's just a matter of time before Tempo do fall. But Lucas again with the impact takes two. And now Tempo. Yes, they're at a disadvantage, but they still have an opportunity here. He's been cooked down to 51, courtesy of the Molotov from that platform player. And Tempo have a decision to make. Henny wants to at least take something away from VP here. I think save at this juncture. Like, unless you're gifted a frag, and that was almost very close Ooh, to one. But okay. they're going to be bowing out of the round there. But that was the thing, right? We had Showtime with that AWP. Like you said, a chance of a collateral kill as well. And somehow didn't even land a single shot there. Wait, how do you hit that shot? That round becomes a lot easier for the Tempo Storm there. They get the first kill, it kind of rattles up VP a little bit, but they were so fast to react. As soon as he gave his position away, you saw the Molotovs, the HE smoked out. Nothing he can really do. And it's Basher and uh, Bialy finding those entry frags as well and just pretty much securing the round there. Like you said, Lucas does step up and get a couple of kills, but that's about it. If Lucas was to just give... He's going to be gifted that... Oh! oh, no, he's not. I was like, he's going to be given an AWP. Neo aggressively hunting, taking a risk with that heavy investment. They do, have, of course, have money for days at this point in time. But hitting that no-scope does take another rifle and Kevlar away from Tempo. So, the pause gives us a time to slow things down, Henry. I should, well, I, I'm going to assume this is not a technical pause. I, I feel like that's just Tempo going, guys, we've picked up one round. Yeah, they probably just need to kind of chill out a little bit. Obviously, VP have found their rhythm now, and they're kind of firing all cylinders. And yeah. they've got great money as well. And looking at the Tempo store money, they're like 
oh, maybe three K average with this AWP. The thing with the open cobble is it can be so versatile. Like you could go towards long aim for that aggressive face. You can go towards middle. You could face up a platform. You can boost drop down. There's many different options, and just a singular orb on a map just to open things up. But that's all you have. That can be enough to get you a couple of frags at the start. If he's rotating efficiently and making sure he's actually reading the map well, it's still possible to do something with this. And what's kind of interesting to me is that, you know, the discussion on the desk was that Pasha has been picking up the orb more. However, Neo has been committed to this. Well, this is the thing. Well, I, I was one of the people who was, like, skeptical whether Neo would be continuing the AWP right. form here. Like, on the first map against Astralis, very quiet on the CT half of Overpass. It looked like he couldn't really get rolling. And it was, that was the, the thorn in their side, really. Device was going absolutely nuts and is going, like, doing what he does best, rotating very efficiently, opening up the map time and time again. And it's Neo. He doesn't have that flair to him, but he can be a very solid, stable AWP. Like if he is actually hitting shots here. But he will be going in with the AWP this round. It's number 24 here, and the scoreline in this half currently sits at 7-1. So VP still alive here, just about, and Tempo Storm won't be investing too heavily into this one. Like I said, Henny just with that AWP, okay. and some upgraded pistols for the rest of his teammates as well. But this is all down to Henny. If he can go aggressive, looking like towards long A, and find that first, per that first pick, maybe he can do something with this. Not forgetting it would look a whole lot better if Lucas still had that M4 and Kevlar taken away from him by that last second low scope from Neo. Nice to see they have that got that confidence, that flair that you were, you know, saying was absent over on Overpass. I can't help but also remind you guys that Tempo was so close yet so far in their game against FaZe, and maybe that's at the start of their mind, but I'll come back to that in a second. Already Lucas has got one, and Henny's got another. This is what we're talking about. Impact coming in. Henny, oh my god, Tempo! They've already picked up the round. You said Henny could do something. He's uh. done everything. He picks up three. Lucas snatched one with the CZ and Bolt's put the bow on the present under the tree. It's a bit early, but I'm already coming out with the Christmas metaphors. 15-9 and Tempo Storm out of what felt like very little. Henny had the AWP, a, a little CZ for Lucas, and they've won a round which they couldn't make happen with weapons. And that's the, the pressure release for Tempo Storm as well. They've made number 15 on pretty much nothing as well. One AWP, it's Henny, like I said, that's enough to win you rounds. He gets in the right position at the right wow. time. He finds three kills and the CZ prevailing as well. And that's just going to be absolutely devastating for Virtus Pro. Against that sort of buy, that's the way they loot. They get to match point. That's kind of disappointing for them, but they're still alive here. And I've got a full buy going forward, but that's just going to ramp up Tempo Storm. Now they can afford to be a little bit more audacious, a bit more aggressive. Power of the pause, the Henry. Power of the pause. Yeah, every time it feels like a CSK. It's crazy. And of course, the team that didn't quite fall to that was the Brazilian side, Luminosity Fanatic, calling that pause and Luminosity not bowing at the knee, of course, yesterday. Now, though, here we go. Nine for Virtus Pro. That 15 has finally been reached for the Brazilians. It's been a long time coming for them after such a successful T side. And he wants to go aggressively. You can see that already just that one round that throws three kills has completely put a bit more spring in his step. Absolutely. Well, even so far, keeping things a little bit slower. They have got limited utility. One smoke remaining and a couple of Molotovs. That's about it. The smoke is towards Taz. He will be focusing that on smoking out that window area towards drop down and hoping they can do some sort of potential beast play. As I said, they're looking like they're favoring towards middle. No real indicative signs of where they may be heading. Going to be facing towards mid. That's just a bit of a frag right now, but managed to get towards the top of the ramp here but without being detected. Yeah, you can see that actually. Tempo very passive on this hold on eight. Bolts just kind of committing towards long. It doesn't mean that whoever he's going to get a whole lot of information. And a double! Bolts just getting handfuls of kills. Two for him and now Showtime can perhaps finish this one. Even indeed, they can get close. Now on to Snacks and Taz to keep this alive, keep this dream. Virtus Pro, and now Bomb going down. That's going to be a start for the T side, but they have already taken a bit of a beating. Taz, just 12 points of health. Similar situation for Phelps, though. And there is no nades for the CTs for this retake. Just the one kit for Lucas, but here they come, encroaching on towards the site. They need to check their corners. There's not really... This is one of the closest rounds. Tempo are going to get close to that 16. You know Virtus Pro is so hungry for it. And already Snacks has taken down Phelps. Virtus Pro looking to stabilize after Bolts' is shattering double. Going to try and do one better, but here comes Lucas again. Now a 1v1 all onto Taz. He's only got 12 points of health. He's going to get hunted down. And Henny, of course it's Henny. Three in the previous round. And now he's ooh, eventually going to find the bomb kit is present. And he is going to have just enough time. GG's in chat. And Tempo have knocked Virtus Pro down a peg or two. The Brazilians, it looked a little shaky on that second half. But they do stabilize and do pick up a huge win. It was doubtful from some. They weren't expecting to see Tempo do it, but they have. Unbelievable scenes here. What an upset as well after VP comes so emphatically against Envious there. Taking down one of their favorites of the tournament. They go up against Tempo Storm, losing 13-2 in the first half. Looking like they were completely out of it. They didn't seem they had a chance. They had a very good showing in the second half though. Got to what, 8-1 or something? But that pause comes in from Tempo Storm. They win it with just the AWP and the pistols. And what a storyline for this team. The Young Brazilians, their first showing on European soil. And they've taken down one of the most legendary names in the game. It's a shame for these guys. Obviously, we want to see VP in that stadium. We want to see the crowd. We want to see that kind of energy in the room. But 
So far, it's not looking too good. They have one win and two losses now, and Bialy in that first half as well. One for 14, I think it was, and one of the key players missing in such a vital time. Oh, I'm not sure what, what actually lies forward for this team now. Yeah, I mean, look at Cuban in the background. You can see there their coach. Look at ha ha head in hands, very reminiscent of what Bialy looked like after that first half. They're definitely uh, a spot of trouble for Virtus Pro at this point in time. Feeling like they've hit a bit of a brick wall. Pasha's now joining the head in hand club at the back. Actually, I believe that was Neo, but yeah, so. All in all, Virtus Pro seem to really have <sighs> hit a bit of a wall. That envy, that envy win immediately, yeah. like we were like, okay, we're this back. is Virtus Pro. It's offline. We're in Poland. They want to kind of get us that step closer, get to the arena, and have that that crowd advantage, which you know, tangible. I know, but I, I'm a firm believer in just seeing the power that Virtus. I, I think it's, it's also much a home advantage. It's like how it makes the other team feel on the stage, right? I mean, you can feel good point. Yeah, all the energy going towards one area and like getting cheered. Every time you die, there's cheers. Like that can be a little bit of a minor. That's the way I see. It. I don't see it as such a favor for VP. It's more deficit for the other team, right? So that's why I see it. And then, but for, for, on my side of things, I'm sitting there like, if we win a round. And all of a sudden, the entire the room I'm in, like 8,000 people erupt in cheer. Yeah, sure. You can't tell me there's no adrenaline, oh, extra no, adrenaline pumping I don't, through There's something there, but I don't, I, don't, I, don't think it, I don't think it wins you games. It definitely no, helps. No, no. It kind of is one of those things that's like, yeah. wow, this is amazing. Right? And right now, they're just hanging out in a basketball court, trying to shoot some hoops. And that isn't present. And that's why we uh, are going to speculate that they did fall. But that's taken nothing away from Tempo Storm because a huge victory for them. That T side is something that needs to go down in infamy because it yeah. was so good. We were, it didn't look like, uh, it didn't look like Versus Pro were ever in that on the first half. Mm -hmm. However, they managed to uh, pull something back towards that CT side. And uh, I'm glad you let me cast with you. I'm ho I hope it wasn't. O I'm going to throw it back to your husband in a second. No, we're not. We're going to go to OJ. We're going to go to OJ. We're not going to throw it back to your husband. Um, thanks very much for uh, guiding me through this one. It's been a while. As I do, get rid of the cobwebs. The desk are proud of me. I am too. We're going to head over to OJ. Then we've got a post game interview. I'm his other husband. We're a sharing relationship. What a match that was, though. We chatted beforehand. You said the guys are going to have to bring their A game. That was the A, A, A game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I always told the guys, like, if you don't do mistakes against that top teams, we can win against anyone. And it was one of the games, like, one of the best performers ever. And uh, Kobo is a map that we are really good. I mean, we kind of never lost on Kobo. And, uh, yeah, we were very confident. We studied VP on Kobo, and we knew what what they are going to do. And yeah, we played really great and it's a pleasure to play against these guys here. Such a pleasure that you've basically almost knocked out the home team out of this tournament. You party poopers. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I feel bad about it, but uh, we had to win to still have a chance to qualify. So yeah, part of the game. And let's just talk about that map. Now, one thing Alex said, he said it was a legendary T side and it was so, so good, wasn't it? Yeah, our T side is uh, one of the best halves in all the maps that we have. Uh, um, we are really strong. I mean, we always do fakes, so the team it's very hard for the teams to read what we're going to do. So, yeah, we are very confident on our T side. As soon as they pick CT, we are very confident that we could do damage to them. And let's talk about the nerves, let's talk about the emotions, let's talk about getting stuck on 14. Yeah, well, when, they, when we hit 14, we took a couple rounds. I mean, they read us pretty good. Uh, we couldn't handle the rush on B, and then I told the guy, we paused the game. I told the guys, "Hey, relax, take it easy. Uh, next round we're gonna do a, we're gonna hold on B. If they push, we're gonna take it." And uh, the last round we had Enrique at the Olaf uh, watching B for us, so we kind of knew that they were going to to play on A. So we had like three guys on A, and uh, yeah, we read the game pretty good at the end and uh, finished the match. Yeah. So more matches to play, more matches to win if you want to make it through to tomorrow in the quarter semi-finals. Um, what do you say to the guys now? How do you manage expectations? How do you manage emotions? Yeah, I told the guys, like, before the match, I told the guys, hey, we can win against the VP. I mean, we're going to play our best map. So first step has been made. Now we have to do another step against Envios. They are a great team. And uh, yeah, how the match is now. Envios, Astralis, we have to beat these guys if you want to qualify. Well, it was amazing to watch you. Congratulations and great and great news for you, Matthew. Over these two days, it seems like the Brazilians are coming. It certainly does. It's a shame they couldn't get it done the uh, qualifier for the major because these guys are showing massive potential. And I think Peacekeeper better give Taz a pacemaker because he just shattered Virtus Pro's hearts. I think it's obvious that it's the fallen aura, man. Like he wasn't there. He wasn't there for the major qualifiers. He was he was there at the, you know online qualifiers. You know, cheering them on, maybe helping helping them out between maps. Now he's back there, and they are a totally different team than what we saw just last weekend. 
See, for me, this is nothing new from Tempo Storm on this map, though. You watch the game against Optic, <clears throat> excuse me, you, you see the, the same sort of play coming out. It was Bolts playing well, being a big influential factor. He had ridiculous play throughout that map, just consistency of being a monster. Their, their plays, they knew exactly what Verse Pro were going to do because Verse Pro did exactly what they've done for the last God knows how long that occasionally works well when one player, you know, steps up to the plate, but that was a real you lackluster did, play. You did Good. nail it because you said 14 rounds T side against Optic. They got 13 in this. I know that was very well done, I have to say. You know what the problem is here? About. The problem here is this. So now some people will think after that interview, oh yeah, Temple Storm specifically prepared for VP, anti stratagem and so on, you know. That may work. It, it was the other way around. They had an amazing CT half, you know, and knew what VP does on their T side. On the CT side, it mostly comes down to, you know, hitting your shots, yeah. reacting, you know, having good team play, especially on a map like Cobol, where the cities don't have, you know, a lot of things they can do, basically. Not a lot of areas where they can push, gain map yeah. control. And we pick could not defend that B bomb side. The things no, that I've, no. I, I've seen more from Tempo Storm in the way they approached that B side previously, they, they knew the Pasha plays super close to the drop until maybe he could get an orb, then they changed things up. And then Biali got smashed to pieces playing drop, and they never held drop. So you add those two factors together, hey, fantastic, we've literally got a site to ourselves. Biali got his yeah. first kill in the last round of the half. I mean, <laughs> there I was, last, there, there I was, last game. I was praising Biali, one of the best crosshair <laughs> placements in the world, really good at his aim, basically maybe not good at his positioning, so on. Doesn't get a single kill. He got eight kills total, and he struggled. There was only one game that he even was kind of present in so far in this tournament. Neo as well was quite weak. Now, the AWP we never get really got to see because the economy was so low throughout, but this is just a Virtus Pro that even when one or two players finally have a good game, the rest of them are still completely absent. I, They're just I, not on the same page at all right now. No, not at all. Um, Cobble could have been a good map, but then it only became a good map in my mind because I saw one game of them with one player and playing exceptionally, which was Neo. He didn't even get the chance to do that. They they got no information at all on their CT side. They just got bulldozers. You, you look at other players who play Bialy Spot, you look at like Flusher, right? This guy is a monster at holding that area. He's like a linchpin. If he goes down, then hey, that map is suddenly open. It's like drop is essential to Cobblestone. It's no surprise. You see them exploiting in the pistol round, instantly just plowing through. They lost out a couple of trades. I can't remember who just went up to the platform and actually won out on the trades there for Verse Pro. They're like, screw it, let's go back to what worked. Get down drop, one player lurking up long, and it suddenly works out perfectly. It's like for Pro, if they looked maybe at one of the games these guys had played on this map at any single point, of course, like you can't prep when you're doing these sort of bands coming out. But if you even maybe considered it, they'd be instantly read up on how they like to play because it was exactly like what they did before. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that is the question. How much does Virtus Pro know about Tempo Storm? It's essentially a question that shouldn't need asking. These guys have had so much time off. They know they're struggling. The whole group was a threat. Taz said it this morning. They couldn't be reliant on that one win against Envious. They still had to play out the rest of their games. That just became a lot harder now because they're ultimately in a position where they're relying on other teams to lose rather than them winning their way into I mean, they still have to play f uh, phase, right? I mean, it's not like they're out of the woods yet. Yeah. They still have a, a really important game. And, you know, if they win that, then they still have a have a chance to, to pass Margin. this group. Yeah, although marginal, but a chance exists. The thing is, I was... I was, I was we mentioned it in the pregame that the Tempo Storm is a momentum-based team. If they get a good start, if they can, you know, get hyped, all of that groove, then uh, there's a chance for them. But I was expecting from VP to be able to weather the storm, right? They should be able to reset better than they did. Let's be honest. Like, they, they didn't even put, call, like, a timeout at any point during that first half, if I'm not mistaken, or, like, until it was very late into the game. It was, like, why don't they just slow down for a second? Like, take it as it is. Like, okay, we are actually struggling here, guys. Like, call the pause, take the second, discuss it through, because they do do well after pauses or a little bit, a bit of a break mentally to reset. If they keep going, like, head first, it's like, guys, we'll eventually do better. You end up with the half scoreline that they did, and by then it's almost too late. And they had the worst possible start as well, that reset after the first gun and oh, Tempo yeah. managed the economy. So like you say, Virtus Pro did not weather the storm, Yanko. The Tempo storm, Yanko. <laughs> exactly. Thanks. Just had to get one cringe joke in there. That's normally what I do in casting. We're going to switch things up in the mainstream because originally we were going to bring you the E-Frag game. Unfortunately, it means we may not see them on the mainstream today because we now have Tempo Storm and Envious. This is a very crucial game for the group. If Tempo Storm win out, including a win against Astralis. They're the only team that can actually still reach the semis. If they don't, if Astralis beat win them, against the are you, you, oh, you're presuming from, that if they, if they win, if they uh, beat uh, Envy, if they oh, okay. if they win out the rest of their games, including beat Astralis, they'll be the team in the semis. Right now, because Astralis beat Virtus Pro and beat Envious, they're the only team, Tempo Storm, that can actually knock them off the pedestal, take away that first spot. So, 
this is this plays a big factor in this as well as not to mention that a Temporal Storm do beat Envy alone. That means they're going to be in a prime position and Envy are still struggling as with Virtus Pro. It still creates a dynamic in the lower part of the group. So very important game that we're going to bring you on this stream coming up. The EFRAG game will be on ESL underscore CSGO B. Don't forget to head over to plays.tv to, uh, to capture all your highlights for the weekend. Remember, tweet me those and uh, you can win some shadow daggers by the end of the weekend. I'll, uh, we'll do that draw perhaps on Sunday during the, uh, the female tournament that's also coming up. But uh, that said, don't forget the score. Esports as well, and we'll be back right after the break.